Warning, The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Hey, Tom. Tom, we got the newspapers, yeah. We got the Times and the Post on our payroll anymore. Okay, listen. Day one, you run the story about old man dies in his sleep. Very typical. Day two, wasn't really pillow on his head. Pillow was on the headboard. Fell over his head. Day three, most old Italians sleep with pillows on their head. Day four, anyone asking questions is a nut. Okay, we got still people on the payroll from the Daily News. The Post. All right, Tom, you got your marching orders. This is the Savage Nation just having some fun here with the imaginary scene going on behind the scenes of the most important and questionable death of our lifetime. Hello, how are you? The most important and questionable death of our lifetime. That's right. Did you hear what I just said? So I'm going to ask you a question again today. Day, it's day three of my coverage, day five of the media attention to Antonin Scalia's death. The question for you is this. Should we keep talking about Judge Scalia's strange death or move on and talk about what? Number two, if the death of a U.S. Supreme Court justice under even a small bit of strange circumstances doesn't warrant media coverage, tell me what does. The election is nine months away. What is currently in the news that is more important than the death of Scalia and possible wrongdoing? Why is the media and the administration's first reaction to label any questions a conspiracy theory? All they have to do is investigate, do an inquest, and it would be over. Why are they not even doing that? Who gains the most from Antonin Scalia's death? Why would officials in charge act in the manner that they did to quickly determine the cause of death, especially that individual judge, Cinderella Guevara, who refuses to answer any questions to anyone right now? Why was there such a hurry to embalm Mr. Scalia's body and get it back to D.C.? Why was a doctor never called to the ranch? Why would Scalia have chosen to go to the middle of nowhere for a, for a vacation? Who encouraged him to go there and why did he go there? And these are the questions. You're the audience. The phone number is 855-400-7282. 855-400-SAVAGE. On michaelsavage.com today... I asked Art Moore, the webmaster, to saturate the page with the issue of Mr. Scalia's passing. On the top of the page, we have an interview with a reporter who was down there yesterday. Texas officials attempt to defuse Scalia death conspiracy theories, UPI. Everyone is quoting Donald Trump on the Michael Savage show. Gawker has perhaps the most interesting line on this. Scalia's hunting trip was a gift from a, quote, friend who had business before the Supreme Court last year. That is a real minefield. Because so far as I know, accepting a free vacation is a reportable gift. Poindexter, the ranch owner, said, I did not pay for the justice's trip to Sabalo Creek Ranch. That was sent out Tuesday. He was an invited guest along with a friend, just like 35 others. Well, who did pay for his trip? That's the question. In addition to that, the ranch owner, Mr. Pondexter, explicitly denied paying for Scalia's charter flight to the ranch and declined to identify the friend who accompanied the justice or any of the other guests on the trip. Did you hear what I just said to you? Who paid for the charter flight? A Supreme Court justice makes about $225,000 a year. They generally do not fly on, well, I assume it's a private jet. You say charter, charter flight, what was it? What did he charter? A DC-7? Usually you say it's a private jet. A flight from east to there, maybe 30 grand, my guess. 5,000 an hour is the rough cost. If you wanted to charter a Citation, wanted to charter a, uh, a number of jets he could have gotten for about 5,000 an hour. Who paid for it? 
Now, many are saying that there was something else that needs to be looked into, which is the fact that it's uh, reportable gifts, the flight and the, and the hotel. But people are saying, well, you know, there was business by Pondex to before the Supreme Court last year. It seems like a payoff. I totally disagree with that. Th that's absurd. Last year, an age discrimination suit filed against the Mick Group, a subsidiary of J.B. Pondexter and Company, reached the Supreme Court, which declined to hear the case. So now the left wing is trying to make it sound like uh, Scalia was taking a bribe, that he rejected the case against the, the company owner and he got rewarded. I'll tell you why that's crap. First of all, I recently had a case before the Supreme Court, so I know a lot more about it than anyone in the media. That's number one. Let's just get our facts clear. I just had a case decided in my favor before the Supreme Court. You know how? They threw it out by the guy who was trying to block uh, justice here. They throw out most of the cases. The Supreme Court denies 99.9% of all cert petitions filed, by the way. They only take 80 to 100 cases a year. So if you're going to say that a cert denial is somehow evidence of corruption, then literally every single one of the justices is corrupt, which is absurd. So that's the truth. So there was no corruption. The question is, who gave him the free trip? I don't think it had anything to do with the Supreme Court case whatsoever. They throw most of the cases out. But the free vacation? Yes, question mark. The charter flight? Yes, who paid for it? Now, the question is, why am I talking about it? The answer is because there's no bigger story in the media. None whatsoever. Oh, there are other stories that I intend to touch on today. You want to hear them? Radioactive material stolen in Iraq raises security fears. How'd that happen? World on red alert as radioactive material stolen from Iraq that ISIS could use to build a dirty bomb? Ask the golfer how that happened. Ask the lying golfer who won't even go to Scalia's funeral Saturday. He won't even answer a question whether he's going to go to a funeral. They asked the hack today, the spokesmouth for him, will he go to the funeral or give up golfing? He won't answer it. Can you imagine a president like this? Who paid for Antonin Scalia's vacation to the luxury resort in Texas? It's a valid question. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to cast aspersions on him. But, you know, what's good for the goose is good for the gander here. I am an independent. And the way I prove I'm an independent, not by saying it every day, but by proving it every day. And the way I prove I'm an independent every day is by asking questions about people on both sides of the aisle. Not just taking a partisan side just for the sake of effect. So here are the newest stories on the Scalia death, and I posted most of them on michaelsavage.com, and I believe that this is a necessary story or I wouldn't be doing it. That's why I'm keeping it alive. Somebody, if I keep this up long enough, a foreign press outlet is going to break some news on this as sure as I'm sitting here. Some British tabloids are going to find something out. The National Enquirer will be on to this. Somebody is going to find out more about the strange death because something's wrong here. There are there's too many elements to this story for a non-investigation, I'm sorry. Is it a conspiracy to keep talking about it like this? No, of course not. That's why yesterday Michael Savage said we need a Warren-like commission. The talk radio giant called for a probe of Scalia's death. What is wrong with that? Will anyone tell me what's wrong with that? Why is it wrong to ask for a, a, a um, what did I call it? I can't even remember what I call it. We need a Warren-like commission to investigate this. This is serious business. We needed an immediate autopsy. It was required, but it's not going to be available. There was no medical examiner present. There was no one who declared the death. It was there. It was done by telephone from a U.S. marshal who had been appointed by Obama to a, d a dumb judge. Right out of the movie, A Touch of Evil. Again, I have to refer to movie, ref movie references here. Do you remember Orson Welles' movie, A Touch of Evil? Are you listening to me? What are you wasting your time listening to any other channel in the world during my time? This is the most important time of the day for anybody with a brain in the world, is my show. Is that egotistical? Of course. If I'm not for myself, who will be you? If I'm only for myself, who am I? Then I'm just a dumb blowhard. I'm not just for myself. Yes, of course I am for myself, because I must be, because no one else will be. But I'm not only for myself, I am for the people. And my people need to understand how important this story really is. Newest on Scalia death, UPI. Texas officials attempted to fuse Scalia death conspiracy theories. 
And the UPI says, during an interview with conservative radio host Michael Savage, Republican frontrunner Donald Trump said that death is a horrible topic, but they say they found a pillow on his face, which is a pretty unusual place to find a pillow. Savage then said he wanted an investigation, which is a pretty unusual place to find. I'm sorry. Savage then said he wanted an investigation into Scalia's death to determine whether it was an assassination. Savage said this is going to be bigger and bigger and bigger. We need the equivalent of a warrant commission. We need an immediate autopsy before the body is disposed of. Next, Cheryl Chumley, WND, the, the, one of the finest journalists in the media, Cheryl Chumley. She says, Obama Pondexter picks fuel Scalia suspicions. That's an interesting story. Gabriel Bluestone, Gawker. Scalia's hunting trip was a gift from a friend who had business before the Supreme Court. Again, I dismiss the business part of it. They dismiss most cases. That's absurd. Uh, Scalia death. Judge likely violated law. Kit Daniels Infowars. By not performing an autopsy in late Supreme Court Justice Scalia, Presidio County Judge Cinderella. Can you believe this? You have a glass slipper. This one has a glass brain. Uh, the judge, Cinderella Guevara, likely violated state law. According to Texas Code of Criminal Procedure, Justice of the Peace shall conduct an inquest into death of a person who dies in the county, served by the justice of any of the following conditions are met. A, person identified, B, person unidentified. Uh, okay, so she violated the law. She won't answer questions. Page three. Page four. Cryptic 9-11 caller didn't identify Scalia. This is a big one. Texas Sheriff says, NBC News, John Shoup, the owner of the Texas ranch where Supreme Court Justice Anthony Scalia died called a local sheriff to report the death. Listen to this carefully now, but specifically didn't say whose body it was, the lawman said yesterday. All the owner told Presidio County Sheriff Danny Dominguez in a Saturday afternoon 9-11 call was that the person's name was Big and it's overwhelming. Dominguez told the AP. Dominguez told the AP that he drove 30 minutes to Sabalo Creek Ranch near Marfa, and then he learned firsthand it was Scalia. Next, San Antonio Express News. After Scalia's death, critics question handling of case. Martin Cuz. Wow. Oh, this is amazing. Texas has no coroners, and most of its rural counties, including Presidio, lack a medical examiner, a dual predicament common in sparsely populated areas of the country. The Texas Code of Criminal Procedure assigns the duties of a county coroner to a justice of the peace. Authorities follow the code's guidelines and inquest by contacting Presidio County's two local judges to seek a declaration of death. Both were out of town. And as stipulated by code, officials then contacted the county judge. That's very suspicious. They were out of town. They couldn't have sent the car to get him. They couldn't have sent the helicopter. The feds flew in on Black Hawk helicopters, and they couldn't have picked up the two justices. Okay, so now you've got another piece of the puzzle here. And now there's the articles coming out, as I implied they would come out, from The Godfather. This is a now a spin from The Washington Post. Quote, why those conspiracy, conspiracy theories about Antonin Scalia's death don't add up. First of all, the pillow thing appears to have been a misunderstanding. Doctors we spoke with suggested the finding 79-year-old man dead in bed was hardly abnormal. See, I told you. We own, we own people in the Post, don't we? Who do we own? Who do we own in the Times? Run stories about the conspiracy. And it's an old man who died in his sleep. Anyone who says anything else is a nut. Those are the newest on the Scalia story. I intend to discuss it today. Everything is at stake for our future. The monster in the White House has said specifically he's going to appoint a radical left-wing fanatic to the Supreme Court. And if you think the rhinos are, are, are going to fight it, you're wrong. Rhinos fold in advance on Obama's supreme liberal. Remember the other day McConnell, the turkey gobbler with the, the gullet under his neck? Remember him, McConnell? They found him on a turkey ranch. The first day he said, we're going to block it. We're going to block, block it. Block it. Block it. Block it. Now McConnell's saying he won't block it. Now McConnell said he's going to give him a fair hearing before the end of the year. Block it. Not block it. We're not going to block it. We're going to pass it. We're going to pass it. So don't expect the rhinos to say, no, we're not appointing a, an extremist to the Supreme Court. The gobbler already said he's going to do it. 855 400 